So I am so glad that you all could join us tonight. And we are going to try our best to stay on schedule and honor our time schedules. So as you can see, we have a very tight agenda tonight. Um, it will be a little different. We're going to try to do less talking from us and more input from you. So as the night goes on, we're going to try to get to those breakout groups so that we can get your input. Um, we do have three major objectives tonight. What we'd like to do is first give you a recap of our strategic plan and some of the things that we have accomplished in our five-year plan. And then we'd also like to, in our breakout groups, get some information and input for you, from you about our upcoming school budget. And then finally, the big part of the evening is, as we're finishing this five-year strategic plan, we're in year four and we'll be finishing next year, year five, it's time to look at the next plan. So just like we did a couple years ago when we were developing this plan, we're going to start thinking about what do we need to do for the future. So those are going to be our three goals for tonight, and we're going to, like I said, try to honor this uh, time schedule. We will have door prizes at the end of the night. You do have to be present to collect your door prize, so make sure you come back uh, in the cafeteria at the end of the night. Real quick. So welcome and introductions. I am Crystal Edwards, the superintendent of Lawrence Township Public Schools. And as you can see from my list here, we have a lot of people here that make this event a special event. Everyone from board members to central office members. We have a lot of teachers and staff members, our administrators, a whole bunch of kids who are here with us, of course, parents and family. And in the back, we have our community partners. So hopefully you had an opportunity to uh, meet with some of our community partners. In addition, I would like to thank what I call the behind the scenes crew, all the people who made this room look beautiful and registration, our custodial staff for helping set up our tech technology department, um, and there's babysitting in the library. We have a group of students and a teacher that is in the library, making sure that happens, and of course, food service um, for providing a little bus with some snacks tonight that helps us concentrate food service. So again, I'd like to thank everybody for assisting us and um, looking forward to a great evening. So let's get into the evening. All right, inside your packet, you have a lot of information, but one of the things you have is a copy, a modified copy of our five-year strategic plan. And also, if you signed up ahead of time, you probably received an electronic copy by email. Um, we have four district goals. We use the acronym FACT to represent those goals. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time reading to you tonight because, as I said, that information is also in your packet. But our first goal is our fiscal goal, which looks at how we use our resources. Our second goal is academic excellence and equity. Our third goal, and this community conversation fits under our third goal, is community engagement and community outreach. And finally, our, four, our fourth goal is the total child. And this is the goal that we changed last year. We, when we started the plan, it was technology. And then as technology became weaved into the other four goals, we, we morphed it into the total child with our character ed and our athletic program in there. So tonight, what you're going to do is hear about these four goals, some of the things that we've accomplished. We will not go over every single thing that's in your packet. We'll just highlight a few things. Um, there will be opportunities for questions and discussion and follow-up. But most important, this is the first night of our planning for the next five years. There will be other opportunities and other um, nights where we really will get together and continue our planning process. So at this point, I would like to call up Tom Eldridge, who is our business administrator, to talk a little bit about fiscal responsibility. It's nice to see so many people here, and it's nice to see you again. It's been uh, a year. And I remember the first year we sought your input and you graciously gave it to us. I can assure you that since that first year we've never lost focus. 
the, the F part of fact, the fiscal accountability, was taken very seriously. It wasn't taken from the vantage point of uh, developing resources only or saving resources, but using them not only efficiently, but effectively. All of our resources are used to propel us further for the educational mission. And so I'll share with you some of the major things we've done, but the minor things, like the skin of an onion, all build up to something big also, and those are in your strategic plan that you have in front of you this evening. One of the things that we've done is saved uh, funds through making sure that we don't consume energy or produce or by either not consuming it or producing it. So we're saving resources in a number of ways. Financially, we've saved uh, approximately $400,000. This slide is an illustration of where we began in the base year of 910 with our goal. And then you'll see that over the course of the years, the blue line is the combined electricity and gas consumption of the district. And we've channeled that down over the past three years from base year 2009-10. We've done that in a myriad of ways. One of the ways we did that is we installed 600, excuse me, 6,000 solar panels on our buildings. We've also replaced boilers in our buildings. We've done other things as well, as well to create awareness, uh, such as real-time meters, so that not only can we see what kind of energy we're producing through our solar panels, but we can also see what kind of energy we're consuming directly from PSC and monitor that also. The savings from that was $418,000. And again, the idea of that savings is to be better at what we do in addition to saving money. So what did we do with that? We invested it back in program. This goal also challenged us to find grant money. The idea of finding grant money is the way I saw it was to do a few things. One, to have someone else fund our initiatives, but also whatever grant money we received was to make it pay us back into the future. And so we were made aware of a program through PSE&G where we could have PSE&G pay for 80% of our energy retrofitting for our lights, motion sensors, and some heating, ventilation, and air conditioning uh, uh, upgrades. And you'll see that as you walk around our buildings when we have motion detectors and the lights in the hallways and the classrooms and offices go off and uh, things of that nature. Annually, we saved $75,000, roughly $76,000. Our investment was 20% of that, and it pays itself back in 1.3 years. Forevermore, we save money. It also had an aesthetic appeal as we changed out all the lights in the Lawrence Middle School gym, as well as the intermediate school and a number of other places. In addition to that, we didn't confine ourselves solely to facilities. We also looked at some of our operating costs. We competitively sought proposals to save money in medical insurance. We saved $300,000 in this current year by switching from our Horizon, which is Blue Cross New Jersey, to AmeriHealth. That was a substantial savings. That was an opportunity that we found last minute, and we took it. And again, we saved not only the employees' money, but $300,000 for the taxpayers. In addition to that, we did what we do at home. We refinanced, except for when we refinance, we didn't save a little bit of money. We saved $890,000. And so we always look for opportunities, no matter how vanilla they are, to take advantage of what was happening in the economy to make sure that we found ourselves at the, uh, on, the, on the better side of what was happening. We have many, many other things that we do, from our paperless initiatives to uh, initiatives within the uh, the business office, the food service, right on through to how we operate as a, a board of education. Um, these are just some of the things. And if you'd like to talk about any of these things or even propose ideas, we're always open to hear. Thank you so much for what you've suggested in the past. I went back and I looked at the plan from two years ago, and I can honestly tell you that we are true to that. Your input was valued, and I think you'll see all of that through here. And if you don't, please ask us, because nothing was left unturned. I'd like to introduce Dr. Servillo, who's going to bring it through the next slides. I'm doing the total child. Thank goodness I'm not doing the team for technology anymore. So, um, so we're talking about the total child uh, part of our strategic plan. And after our community conversation last year, 
we developed a strategic plan within a strategic plan. So we developed an athletic strategic plan. The purpose of that was to develop strategies for communication, to increase our student enrollment in, in clubs and activities. So we started what was called the FAN, which is the Family Athletic Network. And that was one of the things that we're talking about throughout the whole school year. And uh, we're doing several different things to increase our communication about our student activities. And one of them is our fan meetings, and we'll do that in the beginning of each season. So we started the school year already with one of our fan meetings, and then we'll have another one in December, and then a final one in March. So if you're interested in participating in that, you can certainly contact us and you can see that information. And the purpose of that is to increase our communication so that we know what's going on uh, during the school day, after school, uh, to help us plan for activities. If anybody attended the board meeting last night, you heard Joanne Groger talk very eloquently about all of the activities that we have going on during this at the school. We have activities in all of our schools. We do after school activities, we have theater, we have clubs, we have community service activities, we have um, food drives and clothing drives, so there are ways for kids to get active in each of our schools. A lot of our activities are after school. At LIS, we also have some activities that are before school. So there's a lot of things for kids to do all during the after school day. I also have up here the Special Olympics logo. So I did want to do a little shout out to our Special Olympics table in the back. Andrea, wave your hand. So she's back there. Um, in case anybody isn't aware, we have our Special Olympics National Games that are gonna come to Lawrence this June. So we're very excited about that. Lawrence High School has an official Special Olympics team, so we're all excited about that. We did soccer this fall, and then we're gonna start with basketball in the winter. And um, so we're looking for more participation in that. If anybody's interested in joining our Special Olympics team, we'd love to have you. You can give me a call. You can call Lana at the, at the board office, and we'll get your information. So we're looking to increase our participation in that. We have a nice official team going on, and um, have to know that the activities are on Saturdays. So we want you to come out, help our, support our team. So, and then we have our character education program. So we have lots of activities in the schools. Our school counselors are instrumental in providing counseling services, character education activities in all of our different schools. And we just started to develop our application for our district to be a district of character. So I'm going to introduce Cindy Westhead. She's instrumental in our character education program. Thank you, Erin. Uh, yes, I'm Cindy Westhead, and I'm proud to say I've worked for Lawrence, Lawrence Township Public Schools since 1991. Today I'm here to tell you about our journey to become a district of character. As most of you have know, know, four of our schools are New Jersey schools of character, and two of our schools are national schools of character. One year ago, uh, after following the community conversation, we created a district character of education committee comprised of guidance counselors, teachers, administrators, representing each of our seven schools. Using the character education partnerships, 11 principles of character education as a guide, the committee discovered that our schools are already providing many wonderful activities for the social, emotional, and character development of our students as they move through our schools from pre-K through graduation. We will be showcasing those activities on a newly created district character of education website. Within the next year, we hope that we will be able to share the accomplishments of being recognized as a district of character. Thank you to the parents and students and staff who are helping us through this process. And now I'm happy to introduce uh, Rebecca Gold, our Director of Personnel. As you've just heard, we have a thriving character ed program which affords the staff and students many, many opportunities for community involvement. Over the last five years, we've increased our participation in community activities and have offered numerous opportunities for community members to take part in these events. Last year, we worked on our marketing plan and we have a new district logo, lead, achieve, and succeed. 
and that's something that we do often and we do it well. Lastly, we set out to develop ways to communicate with all of you more effectively, get the information into your hands as you need it in a timely fashion. We redesigned our website to make it more informative, more intuitive, more user-friendly. We have quick news. We have the link, Facebook, blogs, tweets. We received a grant from LTEF, the Lawrence Township Education Foundation, to create snippets, short video clips of what we do. Hopefully you've seen or heard some of these things going on. And um, I'd like you right now to meet Stephen Prentice, who's going to show you what's coming up next. Um, as uh, as uh, Ms. Gold uh, just talked about the snippets, we also have a, uh, another new uh, YouTube channel it's called uh, LTPS Rewind, and that's uh, things that you maybe have seen on or didn't get to see on uh, Channel 37 on the local, uh, local channel. We're going to put up on the, the YouTube site so you'll be able to access it kind of on-demand video. Um, and one of the new things we're going to be doing and rolling out in the next month or so is the new LTPS uh, um, app and this will be available for both Android and iPhone. Um, you'll be able to get news right off of the uh, right off of the app. Uh, calendar. You can look up uh, directory information. Uh, the, the whole uh, the staff directory is on there. Uh, you can access uh, the, the mobile power school with your login down there. Um, there'll be photos. photos. There we go. We'll be able to see photos. There we go. Um, and there are also videos, Twitter, links to the athletics department. There's also school um, specific pages, so you can change the school, and the schools uh, have school specific information, and their color, uh, color and logo uh, goes along with that. And all, all the schools will be represented. Still working out the bugs, but you'll be able to check out the Twitter feed from the different schools. And one of the neat features is you'll have a contact us page. So if your kid is out sick, you click on the attendance, and you can dial in the number right from your phone. So no looking for the phone number. Um, like I said, we're currently working out the bugs, and hopefully we'll have this ready by the uh, end of the, probably the end of next month. So I'd like to introduce uh, the Director of Instructional Services, Mr. Andrew Zuckerman. Thank you very much. With the mobile app, we will actually be sending that out via quick news, and we'll have a, a full uh, um, launching campaign so that you will know when it's available both in the Android market as well as the, the um, Apple um, app store as well. Um, I'm extremely excited to be able to um, share with you some updates about the academic um, athletic ath academic portion of the strategic plan. As you see from if you're looking at it in the packet, it is vast. It has a tremendous amount located in it. Um, today, I'm going to actually turn the presentation about this over to Mr. Jameson, um, uh, Leo, and Myra as well, who are going to be sharing with you some experience they're having with the SOUL project, the self-organized learning experiences. As you see up on the screen, this actually covers a wide variety of areas within the academic portion of the strategic plan that you can look into the connections um, at, when you get home or as this presentation is shared with you. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Jameson and his students. They're, they're the real stars of the show, actually, not me. Um, for those of you that do not know me, uh, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Lawrence Intermediate School. Um, I've been here now in Lawrence since like 13th year, um, and it's been a great experience the whole way through. 
Um, I'm not going to read this, but you can read through it. This is something I developed a couple years ago for what I want um, to be as an educator. And really, um, long story short, my entire objective and my thought process is that I don't teach math or science or reading, I teach children. And it's my job as an educator to provide for my students whatever they need at any time. Um, and today's students, even, even from, from when I first started teaching, they come to school now with a different set of skills. And for a lot of kids today, the traditional classroom no longer works for them. And so as their teacher, it's my job to figure out how am I going to reach them and how are they going to succeed. And last year I spent a lot of time thinking about this and through um, a company called TED, which stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design, I came across a gentleman whose name is Dr. Sugata Meacher from Newcastle University. Long story short, he had this great idea about developing a school in the cloud for kids. And uh, it's a 20 minute presentation, I suggest you watch, it's fantastic. And he was given a million dollars to put his idea in action. And I saw this video, and there's a lot of resources online for how you can do this in your classroom. Okay, and basically, my job is to get out of the way, and instead of making learning happen, to just let it happen on its own. And because today's learner are capable of more than you could possibly fathom if you just let them go and just kind of facilitate learning, be the person in the middle of it, kind of pushing them in the right directions instead of just telling them the answer. And these guys will tell you, I think they get a lot more out of it than um, they ever would have thought was just telling them everything. Um, so why self-organized learning environments? For, for number one, it's extremely child-centered. And in today's world, the things that they need to be learning in school are higher level thinking skills and critically problem solving skills. Because when they go out into the real world, that's what they have to do. And we're preparing them for jobs that do not exist yet. And so they need to be able to learn how to think, not what to think. And so I've kind of taken this idea and I've kind of run with it. And um, it's been a great experience. Long story short, when we we're putting out all our ideas on um, social media, uh, through Twitter, through, through my classroom's Twitter feed, it got picked up from a classroom in Italy. And we were learning about the Roman Coliseum, and they were in the Roman Coliseum at the time. And since then, we, we have been able to Skype a few times back and forth every couple of weeks, exchange ideas, give each other questions to solve and figure out. And overall, I think it's been a great experience. So, like I said, we, we still Skype with them every, every few weeks. We're going to do another one next week. And the kids themselves now are generating some of these big idea questions of things that they want to know about. And really, if you read through some of these questions, they're pretty high-level questions. Half of them I don't even know the answer to, to be quite honest with you. And that's, the, and that's the best part about it, is when they're going through these questions and they look at me and I just shrug my shoulders at them. And it's a very powerful moment for them when I'm sitting there right with them in the mix, thinking and problem solving and trying to find the answer along with them. It's, I think it's pretty powerful. Uh, one great moment that we had actually yesterday, the last question there, what is the difference between your left brain and your right brain? Um, one of my students, who was he, you know, in his travels in the internet, found a video about a little girl who was three years old who only had the use of half of her brain. He watched this video, it was, it was like a, a five minute video, and he, he was very excited about it, came up to me, told me about it, and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, well, my one question that I want to have, that I have is, which side of the brain does, does she use and how is she going to learn? For an 11 year old kid, that's a pretty powerful question, just to get from that one video. And, um, and so if you can see, and that just, you know, that could take him so far in life, more than he would ever get, I think, in an in a, uh, old school traditional classroom. Another example here, um, I've been in this district a very, very long time. The picture on the left is for you know, part of our character education day, where it's a lot of team building activities. The kids love it, they get a lot of fun out of it. And the one activity that's always a big hit is, is the shoots for the hole in the half pipe. And every kid's lined up, they drop the ball on one end, it goes through their chute, they run to, to the end of the line and keep you know, the ball going the, the, the entire time. Inevitably, at some point, someone's gonna run from people they're supposed to, and the ball drops on the ground, they start over. So my class was doing that for a couple of minutes, and then they stopped. 
and somebody said, there's got to be a better way to do this. Within five minutes, they're all sitting in a circle, having the ball going around and around and around and around. And that's problem solving. It's a real life situation of my students coming together and solving a problem. And it was a much, much more effective way to do it. And that was, and I almost was like, wait a minute, no guys, you can't. I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just take a step back and let them figure this out. And they did a pretty great job. I've been in this district for 13 years, as I said, and we've been doing this activity for 13 years. I've never seen that from any grade, from any kids. That, that, would, that was pretty great. Um, we do, did want to give time for Leo and, and Maria here to kind of share some of their thoughts, some of their experiences, what they like, what they get out of self organizing learning experiences. Well, it's really hard when Mr. J doesn't just tell us like straight up what we're supposed to be doing. So we have to just look up on the computer or, and he lets us work with groups. So we get to share stuff with them. And it's, it's complicated, but later on it gets easier because you know you have more experience about, this, about his questions. And they're really higher order thinking things because we have to actually figure it out on our own without any experience or any knowledge about it. Well, I think, yeah, like her, that um, it's really hard to find all the information by ourselves instead of having Mr. J help us with it. And um, it's nice that we get to work in groups and with partners and start to communicate. And I think it's more about the um, working together than actually finding out the information. <coughs> And, and um, as Stephen noted before, like on, on the snippet space, there is a snippet of my class going through this process. If you want to check it out, and um, there's a piece on, on there that that Leo talks, and he talks about how they need to make decisions on their own whether the information they're reading is credible or not. It's up to them. So they need to make that decision: is this good information? Is this not good information? And that's a pretty, you know, important skill that they have to learn because when they get out into the real world, they're going to have to be communicating with people, making decisions. And so I think that this is a great way to push them in that direction. So thank you for having us. We're really happy to be here. That's why we're here. That's why, that's why we do the work in the district that we do, is so we can have learning opportunities like that for our students. Now, similar learning opportunities happen across the district, whether it's kindergarten students trying to explore in that sense, or students in, a, in an honors class at the high school um, learning to be able to have those discussions and be able to problem solve. Those, that is the direction that we're going with the, with the Common Core, with so many of our different uh, opportunities, as well as and that's what we need to do to be able to prepare the students for when they move on after high school, whether it's into a career or post-secondary uh, opportunity. I'm going to turn the uh, presentation back over to Dr. Edwards to be able to continue. Okay. All right. So now we're at the part where we're going to shift our thinking and start looking at our next roadmap. We just saw what the kids are doing, and as Joe said, the old school way doesn't work anymore. So what does that new school way look like? What do we have to do for our students? How do we help our teachers? How do we help our administrators provide the best learning opportunities for our kids? But before we get there, we actually have to take a closer look at the kids. It's very important for us to know who we're planning for. You just saw two of our finest students here, and throughout the night we have some wonderful kids here. But we really need to look at who's sitting at the table at Lawrence now. So for the next couple slides, I have some quick facts for you, just things for you to think about, particularly when you get to your breakout groups. How does the information that I share with you right now inform your conversation in your breakout group? So let's start with this. Changes in the economy. And everybody knows that the economy impacts the classroom. So we measure that here in the school district by the number of students that receive free and reduced lunch. So let's take a look at Lawrence 10 years ago when some of my high school students were in first, second grade. So this is the percentage of students by building and by district that received free or reduced lunch. 
That was 10 years ago. Let's look at what's happening now. Just take that in for a moment. Almost 25% of our students are receiving free or reduced lunch. And you may say, well, that's a problem for the lunchroom. And you have it solved because you give the kids lunch. But think about this, give you a little assignment. Tomorrow at 1.30, wherever you are, whatever you're doing at work, take a moment to pause. And I want you to think about a classroom. Maybe it's Joe Jameson's classroom. He's doing a bang up lesson, writing lesson or instruction. And there are kids in that class who just came back from lunch. And rather than focusing on the wonderful lesson or collaborating with their classmates or looking up information, these kids are thinking about the lunch that I just had on Friday is the last meal I'll have until I return to the school on Monday morning. That definitely has an impact on what we do as educators in the classroom. That's something that as we do our next strategic plan with these numbers, we need to think about. Another change in our district is our demographics. And again, I'm gonna show you what we looked like 10 years ago and what we look like now. And again, you can see the impact in the classroom. As a classroom teacher, in addition to doing all the things that Mr. Jameson just talked about, our teachers need to be flexible. They need to know how to do things different. They have to do something called culturally relevant teaching because we are extremely diverse. And everybody knows we need to meet the kids where they are. So we need to know about the kids. And look at the number of students whose first language is not English, are non-English speaking students. What impact does that have in the classroom? Again, things we need to plan for. How does that inform what we do with our resources and instruction? Now, making the shift. Andrew talked a little bit about Common Core. How many of you have heard Common Core, Common Core? Right, yep, Common Core, Common Core, right. What is Common Core and how is it different? So the best way to really show you Common Core is just to show you an example of Common Core. So I'm gonna give you a little problem. I want you to think about just what skills are needed to solve this problem. So there it is. Think about that. Solve it. Got it. Solutions. Answers. Anybody brave enough? One six. One six. Pretty quick. You solve that. Oh, you're the math ASI. You solve that pretty pretty quickly. Oh, glad you could, George. All right. So now I had this problem when I was in high, uh, not high school, when I was in elementary school, and I can still remember how I solved it. Not that I understood it, but how I solved it. We had this little mnemonic device called, you are not to ask why, simply flip and multiply. That's all I did. Don't ask why, the second one, flip and multiply, flip and multiply. I did that all the time. I aced math, but I had no concept of what dividing a fraction meant, but I was smart. I could flip it and multiply. That skill would not work now. Take a look at this problem. <coughs> Same math problem. It's a lot harder. That's the shift that Common Core is making. The second problem is where we want our students to be. Look at all the skills you have to use to solve that, starting with just basic estimation, you know, spatial estimation. And there may not be a right answer to this because I could probably reason, if I wasn't given a ruler, maybe that jug is 7 tenths full instead of 2 thirds full. How does that impact my final answer? So I have to estimate. I have to know what to do. I have to use the picture to make my educated guess. I have to do the math. And then where's Barbara Beers? I know she's in here somewhere. My writing supervisor. When it's all said and done with math, I have to write and explain. 
That is common core. That is what is expected of the kids. So sometimes as parents we say, it wasn't like that when I had math in school. I didn't have to do that. This is what the kids have to do today. So this is another thing that's facing our children as we're planning for the future. I think Joe talked about some of the jobs that um, kids have or, or kids are jobs that existed 10 years ago. Here's a list of jobs that did not exist 10 years ago. And I'm just looking at the job titles, wondering, wow, particularly the chief listening officer. Like, what does that person do? Can you imagine for those of you who have first graders and second graders, 10 years from now, what is this list going to look like? And how can a school district prepare students for a list that's constantly, constantly, constantly changing? You hear about apps. Well, Stephen worked to develop an app for our district. You know, it's all about me. How do we as a district prepare kids for this? And it's about the skills. And we're really good at these skills. Because I'm sure each one of us had some form of this. My communication, we had the public speaking class when I was in high school. We had a writing class. We had a marketing class. I took some form of a computer or technology class. There was a class for that. So those four things are skills that our kids need. But where's the class for this? Because the rest of these skills are things that they also need. There's no class for that. That has to be embedded in the curriculum. Teaching kids about follow through. We heard the students come up here. Each one said, it's hard, but it gets easier. But I make my own decisions. We have to be able to do this. So tonight when you're in your small groups, these are the things that are facing our children that we have to think about as we plan the next five years for our strategic plan. So that brings me to your task. And that is to work with our team. We have a bunch of uh, administrators and parents and board members and students who are going to guide us through these small group conversations to start developing our roadmap, our next version of the strategic plan, which will be 2015 to 2020. And we're going to do that in small groups so that we can have a lot of people speak and give input and hear from everybody. So with that, I think I'm going to go to the next slide. It should be right on time. We are going to break out into small groups. So if you are my moderators, where are you? All right, you're going to need to stand by the door and wave a hand. We are going to pack up and leave this room. So you might want to start gathering your things. I'm going to start with the elementary group. Uh, that would be Kathy. Kathy, raise your hand. If you are going in the elementary group, you're in room 403, you are going to follow Kathy. So my elementary people, you are dismissed. Okay, moving on. Next up, Andrew. Okay, first of all, I have to thank all of you tremendously. The discussions that happened in each of the breakout groups were fantastic. Some of the, some of the ideas, well, I think it's I think everybody was contributing some great ideas. However, I am a little biased in this. I think the students, in my opinion, came up with some fantastic ideas. But thank you. We are going to ask the reporters from each group to be able to share two, ideas, two points that all of you were discussing. discussing. One important 2014-2015 important budget consideration. And the second point that they're going to share is one important 2015 to 2020 strategic plan consideration. So we're going to ask the reporters for each of the groups, and we're going to start with the elementary group. Uh, Mr. Billy, where are you, sir? Okay, I'm going to say about four things in one sentence. <laughs> um, there, were, there were a bunch of considerations that there was just uh, quite a bit of discussion about um, gifted and talented, more gifted and talented staffing and equity among schools, um, as well as uh, facility issues. That's great. Thank you very much. And as I'm finding Ms. Lockett for the middle school group, thank you very much. One thing I do want you to know, although only a few points are being mentioned in this reporting out, we will be taking all of the notes that the recorders took during your sessions and be using that for our, for our future discussions as well. 
Okay, so middle school group um, budget points or uh, priority was technology and keeping up with the speed of technology and um, getting updated with the um, all the netbooks and Chromebooks and things of that nature. And our strategic plan priority, uh, there was a lot of talk about after school program options, um, starting uh, more at middle school and dealing with uh, transportation and things like that along with after school programs. And uh, more of an emphasis on global learning and the soul type learning that Mr. Jackson um, shared out on the Wonderful, thank you very much. And last but not least, we have Ms. Sincata with the high school. The budget piece was second, what the middle school said about the one-to-one -one initiative. And taking that through, what, what does that look like next year for our juniors if we're going to continue that with then even more so for our seniors who haven't been a part of that program. Secondly, looking forward into the future, when we looked at groups of students, teachers, and families, the overarching comment that kept coming back was a global citizen and becoming aware of our communities changing within languages, within technology, and how we're incorporating that, incorporating that into our classroom, providing opportunities for our students outside the facilities, and making the community within the facilities available to all of our families. These were there's some fantastic ideas and certainly some things that we need to keep in mind as we move forward. I would like to want to thank you all again for, for your cont contributions as well as the discussions that we had. They, they were truly impactful and very meaningful. Okay. Dr. Edward. All right. Um, just as we conclude out so that you know the next steps, as I started this conversation, it's an ongoing conversation. It takes a while to develop a plan and it takes a village to develop a plan. So we will have additional opportunities for meetings, um, engagement, getting your feedback. Uh, once we get all the notes together and the information from the parking lot, we will be sharing that with you via email. So if hopefully uh, Atlanta has your email, if not, please write it on that index card and leave it on the table so that we can include you uh, in the conversation. But there's a lot of work to be done um, in preparing the budget for next year and also preparing the plan for next year. Just so you know, our immediate next steps, we take all of the information that you just gave us, we go back, work with the administrators, work with the Board of Ed, which is why it was important for all of us to be here tonight to hear from you to start developing um, the pre preliminary plans. And we will have many more conversations. And I, like Andrew, would like to echo my thanks to everybody for giving up an evening and coming out um, and sharing your ideas and your thoughts. And it was some wonderful, productive, um, absolutely outstanding conversation between parents and students and faculty members and the Board of Ed. And I think that here in Lawrence, we do it right. There is no other way to do it but to bring everybody to the table like this to come up with the best programs for our children. So I do thank you and look forward to working with you all of next year. And now I am told there are additional door prizes because we love door prizes um, on the way out. And I will wish you a safe evening as Rebecca's having the next couple drawers. Don't forget if you came